Thanks for viewing and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time subscribe so you don't miss the latest uploads. Last time RMC was ready to listen to the goddess after she told him that she knew information on the, the goddess that abandoned him. The same goddess he is looking to take revenge on. She is surprised that he hadn't forgot her and he says will never forget that goddess who brought him to that world and then abandoned him. She gets ready to help him get his revenge, but he doesn't trust her either so for the sake of trust she also prepares to tell him her weaknesses, and if he still thinks that she will betray him then she threatens that she will just go ahead and reveal to all the other gods that he can hear them. She then tells him her secret which is something called Trist which is a kind of error in this world, and if the Supreme God knows that she used one without reporting it to the Supreme God he'll most likely extinguish her life. RMC is surprised that there's a supreme deity running this game and that this goddess is so willing to talk about it. RMC is also taken aback to find out that she is not an immortal and she is certainly giving him some information he wouldn't have gotten on his own. He doesn't want to get involved in the god's inner grudges but now he can't help it. He gets ready to make a contract with her but only on the condition she will not manipulate or control him like a character in the game. She tells him not to worry because she can't touch his character because he is already out of bounds. He then asks her about her name because he needs to know that to sign a contract. She tells him that it's one of the taboos, to reveal their real names so he can just call her rogue and to make the contract she gets ready to call a moderator but he doesn't want more people to know about his secret that he can hear them but they need a moderator to register and complete the contract. She asks him not to worry as she will get someone she also trusts. She summons the moderator and the moderator is happy to be at her service. RMC remembers that voice. It's the same giggled moderator it's the same moderator who was moderating the game when RMC was taking his revenge on his previous party. The moderator is surprised that the MC is addressing them directly. Rogue tells him that he did tell him that she has a fun game in mind the other day. The moderator doesn't want to get involved in their mess because if the supreme god finds out it's over for them. She tells him if he does as she says they won't be found out. The MC also says it's not a bad offer for him either. The moderator is taken aback, wondering what the MC meant by that. The MC then recalls what excuses he gave to the beard god of him doing certain strange things in the game when it was really the MC acting on his own. The MC tells him they are all in the same boat and can't get out of this situation and scathed. A few moments later they have made that contract but RMC still doesn't fully trust them and he also didn't tell them everything either. They don't know that he can hear the dice and change the outcome and he will not let them betray him again. RMC returns to the inn and all they can see are skewers and beverages, and Rogue is also there, and based on their dialogue, she appears to be of lower level than those two gods. RMC finds that some of the gods' warriors are discussing about a prominent mage who was once working in that area and one day the mage lost her power and also her mind. When one of the gods' warriors finds RMC staring at them, he becomes enraged. RMC takes a plate and smacks the guy for making a huge fuss out of nothing. Rogue is taken aback by his actions. Sido RMC activates his Revenger title where all his stats increase by one level. He takes down two of the guys easily and didn't even use his spear because they are too weak and for the boss he uses his skill the dice rolls and the total is 7 a success using a special poison which paralyzes the boss. RMC then gives him a finishing blow and they are all knocked out. He then tells the guy to pay for the damages. One god is mad at Rogue. She tells him that it wasn't her order. He then leaves, vowing he would get rid of that kind of hero right away. When MC notices someone eating at his table, he comes over and says, that's my food, but she doesn't appear to understand him. Rogue notices the owner of the inn as she says, what are you doing? Lee I told you to stay inside. She then apologizes to the MC, saying, my child is not in the right state of mind. He then asks her if she has a spare room he'd like to stay in, and she brings him to his room. She gives him a discount for the trouble they caused when he returns to his room Rogue asks him if he fought because of me. The MC says well partly because seeing her being ignored by those gods reminded him of the past. She thanks him for that and it made her feel better. He then asks her about the other gods behavior towards her. 
She then asks him if he knew about the gods that players used to talk about on Earth. RMC exclaims that know the gods that appear in myths. He vaguely thought of it like that. She tells him he is correct, but she is a myth without actually being a god, i.e. sort like Hercules a demigod. The MC then asks her about what she was about to say about the red-haired woman earlier. Rogue tells him that the red-haired woman is most likely the mage those heroes were talking about, and she is mentally broken as a result of her god or goddess's disappearance, and the gods and goddesses are referred to as players because they are the ones playing the game, and the heroes are the game characters. MC didn't expect that the disappearance of the players would affect the heroes, so she gives him some more information about it. She states that it occurs in a particularly unique circumstance. She informs him that it's likely that when the players appeared and disappeared in a state of arrival, the shock of that caused even the hero to become strange, it's like a form of possession where players descend to this land by borrowing the body of a hero and the appearance is an act that exceeds probability, so one must be prepared for disappearance. When MC asks what this likelihood implies, she explains that it refers to the degree of practicality it gauges. He quests Iona how likely is it. She explains it's something is to be realized every time one engages in unrealistic actions their probability value accumulates now he understands if it exceeds a certain point one simply disappears. If a person continues doing things outside of reality occurs and earlier is a perfect example. You simply disappear. The powers that be take you out of the incubation tank a la the Matrix. Once the probability value exceeds 100 no one can escape disappearance now MC is concerned because he can control the dice that those gods use which can probably increase this probability value. He will have to be more careful about using it from now on. Next some knights have come to the end because they heard that the former wizard is there and they are there to get the wizard. They have come in the name of the Holy Maiden. The owner is surprised why they want that child who isn't in the right state of mind. They can't tell her the reason why and she then calls the red-haired woman saying some people have come from the priesthood to see you. The head of the knights greets her and asks her to come with them to the church. After two months, MC appears to have joined a party and they are in a dungeon. One of the party members then proposes that MC take a break, MC agrees with them that they should rest before entering the boss room. He then asks the healer to rest. RMC exclaims they will prepare everything hearing for the healer to follow them because the healer has the least stamina among them. The healer thanks him and calls him Big Bro. One of the goddesses is surprised that the hero of the Spear Knight RMC is so kind to that healer. Rogue reminds them that her hero was also a healer, the healer's goddess is initially astonished to learn that the healer can grow like that. She also prepares to teach her healer more skills and MC is listening to what they are talking about while thinking that sneaky Rogue pretending to not know he can hear them. He then opens his status window and in the last two months he has accumulated 10,000 points. A member of the group named Pathfinder comes and gives them some jerky. He also prepares to give some to the healer but the healer is still sleeping. The MC eats the jerky the dice rolls the god of the pathfinders then informs the other gods that the jerky he gave is laced with lethal poison and his character is a fallen hero. MC then stops the tanker from eating that jerky and the dice roll a total of 8 a success resulting in a resisted the poison of the clown mushroom. He informs the tanker that it's poisoned. The fallen hero is shocked how did that spear guy escape death R MC then cuts his neck with his spear in one strike he dies right on the spot. The tanker is shocked at what is happening. RMC checks the neck of the guy to see the reddish tattoos indicating him as a fallen hero. The tanker is startled that the guy was really trying to murder them just now, and now a god is angry that the spear knight RMC resisted the poison. Rogue informs him that her hero has a skill called Hundred Poisons Ignite that can't kill him, and the moderator is also aware of it. The Pathfinder's god is enraged that the two of them planned and targeted him from the start. The MC then requests that the tanker keep this a secret from the healer because the healer would become scared and distressed about the whole situation. 
Because the child is still young, it is not advisable to inform the healer about the situation. The tanker hugs him with her massive muscles, and she never expected him to be this caring. While the two goddesses are enjoying the spectacle, the healer wakes up and inquires about the Pathfinder. MC explains to the healer that they were examining the door together and tripped a trap, and it was a circumstance where even a healer couldn't help. Next, they enter the boss area, and the dungeon boss as the tanker dashes toward the golem and attacks, but it seemed to have no effect. RMC also joins the fight and administers special poison on the golem. With the thrust of his spear to the heart the golem loses its balance which helps RMC to find the core of the golem. He gets ready to thrust again and destroy the golem's core as the golem is about to give a finishing blow to the tanker. RMC destroys the core. Just in time as the golem's attack stops. The tanker is surprised why the golem stopped moving and RMC informs her that he pulled its core out. Without realizing that the moderator and the goddess appear to be satisfied with today's game, the tanker's goddess offers that they play the next game together. Rogue tells them that since there's one vacant seat, they should return to the village for now because someone we know is waiting there. After hearing that someone they know is waiting there, MC returns to the village and while they are eating, someone arrives to join their party and asks who the party leader is, and that someone's goddess is the deity who abandoned RMC in that world. Rogue addresses her as Miss Healer who also has heard that the previous party was wiped out, so she is unsure what she should call Rogue now. Rogue now informs her that she took over the Spear Knight and Miss Healer had also chosen a Dual Swords Master and he's a complete A-class and RMC is shaking with anger after hearing that goddess voice. He informs the Sword Master that he is the party leader and asks what the Dual Swords Master's class is and he can tank and deal damage to an opponent. The tanker is astounded that his face is so handsome, and even the healer thinks he is attractive. MC welcomes him to the party and asks for his name. His name is Chris. The tanker asks him how long he has been in this world. His healer gets angry at the tanker for touching someone else's hero. The tanker's goddess apologizes to her. Miss Healer makes it clear that the hero is hers and no one can lay a hand on him except her. Chris removes her hand, saying it's been five months. The MC is surprised thinking was this god always this jealous, and despite the short time Chris has been here, all of his equipment is of good quality. Chris informs him that his guardian saint has taken good care of him, which makes our MC even more angry because that no good goddess never invested in him like this. Chris also informs them that she was too kind to him and when he was summoned to that world. She even kissed his forehead and said that after all the trials are over we will be together forever and he will do his best to make that day come as soon as possible. I think the goddess has fallen for this new hero of hers. Next they enter a dungeon and Chris is treating the healer like the previous party used to treat our RMC. The MC gets mad at Miss Healer for treating the healer like the same but Miss Healer has her own belief that the healers are incompetent so they have to create tension like that. I really think this goddess is a spoiled brat the healer's gods also gets mad at Miss Healer for her comment on her healer character. The moderator calms all the gods down. RMC is mad because he was ignored as a healer for 7 years by this goddess and now that she got herself a ranked hero she is treating him better than he ever was from her. Furthermore she's still treating and thinking of healers the same that she always has. Then RMC gets an idea for the perfect revenge plan for that goddess. The game is started by the moderator, and it appears that the dungeon this time is a lizardman's dungeon. MC instructs his party to prepare for a fight, but Chris pushes ahead with his goddess divine protection flame. When MC tries to stop him because the floor is sandy and his leg becomes entangled in it, the lizard man leaps at him with their knife. MC enters the battle and saves the damsel in distress. He did not expect Chris to be a clumsy fool, despite his appearance, and Chris is startled that the party leader took three lizards at once, MC urges him to pick the right side. Chris battles one lizard with his flame sword, but fails four times because he was unable to cut off the lizardman's airway. 
As the lizard man was ready to finish him, the tanker enters the fight and saves the damsel. In distress, she scolds him for rushing in earlier without the party leader's orders, and he apologizes to her that his enthusiasm got the better of him, and the goddess are making fun of Miss Healer for bragging so much yesterday and yet he was so sloppy and clumsy that if it hadn't been for the spear knight and the tanker, her clumsy class would have almost died, but she is like it's quite impressive to reach a class level and in just five months. Back to the party they have dealt with the lizard men and now prepare to continue forward on their journey. They discover a chest and Chris prepares to open the chest but it was a trap and the trap is a big sand pit. Miss Healer becomes afraid and asks someone to help her a class hero Chris. The M Nazi jumps to save him, thinking it's time to carry out the plan. They both tumble into the sand pit, but luckily the ground was a pile of sand, so they avoid injuries. Chris Goddess becomes concerned about how they will survive in the dungeon underground. Chris tries to climb his way up which is impossible begins to cry thinking how did this happen. RMC tells him to pull himself together. Our party leader has been stranded in a place like this before and tells Chris that both of them can definitely survive this. Those words give a little hope to Chris. The moderator gets ready to modify the scenario to focus on finding an escape route for the underground dungeon, meanwhile the healer and tanker leaves from the dungeon as they are sure Chris will be fine because their party leader is with him. T's been 8 days in the underground dungeon and Chris is losing stamina because he hasn't eaten properly and now he has realized that under the protection of his guardian saint as goddess he was deluding himself, thinking he was great without knowing the reality. Now he has reached his limit. MC prepares to find something to eat and begins to look on the ground for something that is not poisonous. Chris feels relieved that there is something to eat. That they are capable of eating. RMC finds a spider. Miss Healer does not want Sir Chris to consume the spider. Chris also asks his party leader whether they may eat the spider. RMC demonstrates to him it's safe by eating it, but the goddess thinks that's ridiculous and advises Chris not to eat it. MC also warns him not to push himself, but Chris has reached his limit and does not want to rely on his party leader, he also begins to refer to his party leader as Big Bro Cito, which is the name of RMC. Rest RMC by name because it was said in previous chapters. Shameless plug-in. This video and earlier chapters can be found in the playlist which will appear at the end of this video. Go ahead and re-watch those videos if you like. Anyway back to the story. Chris is ready to eat the spider, but his goddess refuses to believe her eyes that her noble disciple Chris is eating the awful spider. The following day 11 in the underground dungeon, Chris has grown accustomed to eating those spiders, to the point where he is no longer listening to his guardian saint and is instead enjoying the spider. Saito observes something and informs Chris that a monster has appeared, and it is a salamander. Chris inquires of his big brother Cedo. If they can eat that thing, well, they'll have to find out once they catch it. Chris rushes forward again. Good goodness and again Cedo tries to stop him, but the salamander attacks him. Chris activates his goddess's protective slide dash and dodges that assault. He then strikes the salamander and deals damage to it, but this is dangerous because the salamander's blood is hotter than lava. Cedo yells, Chris, drop your sword. Chris's sword has caught fire, so he throws it aside, and blood pours all over the place. Miss Healer is upset that Rogue did not disclose them of this information earlier, and now her Chris is in danger. Cedo throws his spear at the salamander, and the dice rolls a total of 9 a success. The salamander is eliminated, and you have 111 points. Cedo then tells Chris that the salamander's blood is like lava, and that his spear is a sacred item, which is why he was able to damage the salamander with his spear. Chris apologizes for rushing out, and he is also startled that both his elder brother Cedo and his slime friend Lime are full of odd skills. Cedo notices that Chris's impulsiveness must be affected by the goddess, but being within Chris has begun to alter the dice rolls. All of a sudden a monster appears out of nowhere, surprising Miss Healer. The moderator informs them that it is a steel half-dragon. Chris proposes that they avoid that creature for the time being because it appears to be difficult to deal with, but his big bro Cedo says, move aside, I'll handle it. 
RMC attacks him but he dodges the attack and it's kinda making it difficult for him to approach the monster because of the lava and it seems like he can't finish it off with just one spear throw like he did with the salamander so he takes out his poison spear a skill that transforms poison into the shape of a spear and he attacks the monster with the spear. It did a little damage and to make these spears it consumes a lot of mana and he is only able to use this skill 6 times his limit. The beast is still alive yet Sido is buried in his thoughts, believing that this is its final struggle. Chris detects something and pushes his big bro out of the way, claiming it's dangerous, but he is hit by the monster, which eventually dies. They are awards of 372 points for beating the monster. Sido shouts at him for entering the fight without a weapon, but Chris wanted to assist him because he owed his big brother Sido. RMC had no idea Chris would sacrifice his life for him. Chris thanks him for his assistance. Till RMC notices something. Chris's status has changed, and his title has changed to devotee of the enigmatic curse of beginner's luck and aspiration which also shocks MS Healer. The moderator believes it is due to the impact of the Spear Knight, and now that they don't have the twin swords, she prepares to deactivate the skill for the time being in order to ensure that he can heal himself but she doesn't have enough points to do so she can't save her swordsman. However RMC would not let that happen. Miss Healer is also astonished to see the halo. Saito heals him with his great heal. Chris is astounded that his big bro can do so much. Sido reminds him that he, too, is a healer and advises Chris to learn how to heal because healing is necessary in this world, but Miss Healer does not agree. When Chris inquires about the object behind his head, Saito informs him that it is a halo. Chris thinks his big bro resembles a saint from a church stained window painting. Now he wants one too. As they prepare to leave the dungeon RMC informs him how he can be a healer and also acquire a halo like him. Furthermore RMC says with the halo he can acquire a sacred skill like healing purification and such but he will need to invest points to raise it to a rank and he will need to spend around 100,000 points. Will they make it out of the dungeon? Will Chris forsake his goat as Miss Healer and become a healer? Tune in again next time to find out. Remember to give a like and subscribe and thanks for watching.